I call him Prince Charming, and I love him. I will love him forever. You don't know his name, James said again angrily. He is a rich young man, and he will not marry you. He will. Oh look, look there he is. He's in that carriage. Sybil shouted. She pointed across the park at a carriage. James looked across the park, but at that moment another carriage suddenly passed in front of the brother and sister. James never saw Prince Charming. Oh dear," said Sybil. "I wanted you to see him." "I wanted to see him too," replied her brother, "because I will kill him if he ever hurts you." At first, Sybil was angry with her brother, but she remembered that he was sixteen years old. He was a boy. He had never been in love. "You won't hurt a man I love, will you, James?" she said. "No, I won't," he said at last. I won't hurt him if you love him. I will always love Prince Charming," said Sybil, "and he will always love me." So Sybil and James were friends again. But that evening, James spoke again to their mother. "If this young man hurts Sybil," he said, "I will find him and I will kill him. I will kill him like a dog." The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The same evening, Harry, Basil, and Dorian went to the theatre. Basil was unhappy that Dorian was going to marry an actress, but he could see that Dorian was happy. Mr. Isaacs, the theatre manager, met the three friends outside the dirty little theatre. Dorian thought he was a horrible man, but Harry liked him. Inside the theatre, it was very hot and the lights were bright. There was an orchestra playing some music very badly. Lots of young men and women were laughing and shouting at each other. Harry looked around the dirty, noisy theatre. "What a strange place to meet the person you love," he said unkindly. But Basil spoke kindly to Dorian. "Yes, it is a strange place," he said. "But I'm pleased you came here. Sybil has made you very happy." Oh yes," said Dorian. "I'm sorry the orchestra is so bad," he added. "But soon you will see Sybil." A few minutes later, the play started, and very soon things started to go wrong. Sybil Vane was very lovely, but she acted very badly. Tonight she was a terrible actress. The audience started to shout at the actors. Some people left the theatre. The manager looked very angry. Basil and Harry did not want to watch the play, and Dorian's face became very pale. Harry picked up his coat and stood up. "She is very beautiful, Dorian," he said, "but she can't act. Let's go." "I'm sorry I asked you to come with me," said Dorian. "Perhaps Sybil is ill," Basil said kindly. "We'll come again another time." "No," replied Dorian. "She's not ill." Last night she was a great actress. Tonight she is a very bad actress. She is a very ordinary person. Don't talk like that," cried Basil. "She is the girl you love. Come with us, Dorian. Let's go." But Dorian would not leave the theatre. "Go away and leave me here," he said. "I want to be alone." Basil and Harry left the theatre. The play became worse and worse. Most of the people left the theatre and went home. When the play ended, Dorian went to see Sybil. He went to her room behind the stage. He was very unhappy and angry. He had told Harry and Basil that Sybil was a great actress. They had come to see her, and tonight she had been a terrible actress. But when Dorian saw Sybil, she looked pleased. She spoke to him happily. "Oh, my dear, I acted very badly tonight." Before I met you, I was a good actress. I pretended to be in love when I acted the part of Juliet. Now I don't need to act. I am in love. I don't want to act again. Isn't it wonderful? You must take me away from the theatre. We must go away together. But Dorian did not look at her. He ran to a big armchair. He sat down and put his head on his arms. You have killed my love for you, he whispered. I thought you were a great actress. You acted the parts of beautiful women. 
I loved you because you were clever and exciting. Now you are boring and stupid. You don't mean this, do you? whispered Sybil. My God, I was stupid to love you, said Dorian. Oh, tell me that you love me, cried Sybil. Kiss me. I will do anything for you. I will act again. I will be a good actress for you. Sybil fell to the floor, and she lay there crying. Dorian looked at her for a moment. Then he spoke. I am going now, he said quietly. I don't want to be unkind to you, but I don't want to see you again. Dorian left the theatre, and Sybil lay on the floor crying. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. It was late when Dorian left Sybil and the theatre, but he did not go home. That night Dorian walked around London for hours. He did not care where he went. He was upset, angry and confused. The sun was rising when he went home. Dorian decided to go to bed and went slowly towards his bedroom. He walked along the hall and through the library. Basil's portrait of Dorian was on a wall in the library. Suddenly Dorian stopped and looked at the portrait. He was surprised. The painting looked different. The face in the painting had changed. Yes, it had changed. Quickly Dorian opened the curtains. Sunlight came into the room. Dorian looked closely at the picture and saw that the face was different. It looked unkind and cruel. A huge mirror hung on another wall. Dorian looked in the mirror at his own face. He saw a beautiful young man. He had not changed. What had happened to the picture? Suddenly, Dorian remembered the day that Basil finished the picture. Dorian remembered his wish. He remembered his own words, I wish that I could always be young. I wish that the picture could grow old instead of me. I would give anything and everything for this to happen. I would give my soul. Why did the face in the picture look cruel and unkind? Was his wish coming true? Was the picture changing? Dorian thought about Sybil. Had he been cruel to Sybil? He had left her lying on the floor, crying. Yes, he had been cruel. But Sybil had killed his love for her. He would not think about Sybil again. The face in the picture looked at him. In Basil's studio, the picture had shown Dorian that he was a beautiful young man. Now the picture showed Dorian that he was unkind and cruel. Dorian was sure now. The picture was going to get older and he was going to stay young. The picture was going to become old and wrinkled and ugly, and Dorian was not going to change. He was sorry for the picture. And suddenly he was sorry for Sybil. He looked at the cruel face in the picture, and he decided to be kind to Sybil. He decided to marry her. He would never see Lord Henry Wooten again, and he would marry Sybil. Dorian quickly covered the picture with a cloth and left the library. Later that day, Dorian woke up after a long sleep. It was a quarter past one in the afternoon. Dorian got dressed and went to the library. A servant brought him some food and also brought Dorian a letter. The letter had come from Harry that morning. Dorian looked at the envelope for a long time, then decided not to open it. He was never going to see Harry again. Then Dorian looked at the cloth which was covering the portrait. Had the picture changed? At first, Dorian did not want to look at the picture again. Then he thought about Basil. What was he going to say to Basil? Perhaps Basil would want to see the picture again. So Dorian locked the door of the library and slowly pulled the cloth off the picture. The face on the picture looked unkind and cruel. It had changed. Dorian was horrified. Dorian was frightened too. 
He had wished that he could stay young. He had wished that the picture could grow old. His wish was coming true. But the picture was showing Dorian that he was evil. He decided again to be kind to Sybil. He decided again to marry her. Then the picture would show that he was good and kind. Dorian went to a table, sat down and started to write. He wrote to Sybil. He wrote her a wonderful love letter. He said he was sorry. He asked her to marry him. When he had finished the letter, Dorian felt happy again. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door of the library. Dorian! shouted Harry's voice. Dorian, are you there? Let me in, my dear boy. I want to see you. At first, Dorian did not answer. He did not want to talk to Harry. Harry was a bad influence on him. Harry made him behave badly and think about strange things. Dorian remembered Harry's words. You must do everything you want to do. You must enjoy life, the good things and the evil things. You must not worry about what other people think. But Harry was wrong. Dorian wanted to forget Harry's words now. He wanted to be good and kind to people. Then Dorian decided to see Harry. He decided to talk to Harry for the last time. Dorian covered the picture with the cloth and unlocked the door of the library. Oh, Dorian, said Harry, I'm very sorry about what has happened, but don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Are you talking about Sybil? asked Dorian. Yes, replied Harry, but don't worry. Tell me, did you talk to Sybil after the play last night? Yes, I did said Dorian. I was very angry with her. I was unkind and cruel to her. I can be cruel. Before last night, I did not know I could be cruel. Now I have learnt more about myself. I am pleased that you are not upset, said Harry. I have decided what to do now, replied Dorian. I have decided to be good and kind. I don't want to be cruel and evil. I am going to marry Sybil. Marry Sybil. Dorian, didn't you read my letter? I wrote to you this morning. Harry stopped speaking. No, I didn't, said Dorian. I didn't want to read it. You are a bad influence on me. Harry walked across the room. He sat down next to Dorian and took hold of the young man's hands. Dorian, I'm sorry. That letter told you that Sybil is dead. Dead? shouted Dorian. No, she, she isn't dead. She can't be dead. You're lying. He pulled his hands away from Harry. It is true, said Harry. The story is in all the newspapers. There is going to be an inquest, an inquiry to find out about her death. The police need to find out what happened. Why? Why will there be an inquest? What happened? Dorian shouted. Then suddenly he stopped shouting and looked at Harry. She killed herself, didn't she? Tell me, Harry. Tell me quickly. Yes. Sybil didn't arrive home after the play. Her mother went to the theatre at about midnight. Sybil was dead, lying in her room. She had drunk some poison. Harry! Harry, this is terrible! cried Dorian. Did anyone see you with Sybil? continued Harry. We don't want your name in the newspaper stories, too. No, nobody saw me, replied Dorian quietly. Good, said Harry. Now you must come out with me tonight. There is a wonderful singer at the opera tonight. So, whispered Dorian to himself, I have killed Sybil Vane. I did not cut her throat with a knife, but I killed her. Then Dorian remembered his portrait. He remembered the cruel face. I was going to be good and kind, he shouted. I was going to marry Sybil. Now I can never be good. Harry took a cigarette out of a gold case. 
It wasn't a good idea to decide to marry Sybil, he replied. You know it wasn't a good idea, don't you, Dorian? Marriage is boring. Marriage doesn't make you a good person. Perhaps you were right, said Dorian. I don't want to cry. Sybil's death has been an interesting experience. I have learnt about myself. Now we do not need to talk about it again. I will meet you at the opera tonight. Harry left the library, and Dorian went straight to the portrait. He quickly pulled away the cloth. The face was cruel and unkind. He knew the face had changed because of Sybil's death. Dorian thought about what had happened, and now he made a decision. Dorian decided to enjoy his life. He decided to do everything he wanted to do. He decided not to care about other people. And Dorian knew what would happen. The picture would become old and wrinkled and ugly. He would always look young and beautiful. Dorian smiled and covered the picture with the cloth again. An hour later, Dorian was at the opera with Harry. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The next morning, Dorian ate his breakfast in the library as usual. A servant came in while he was eating. Mr. Hallward is here, sir, the servant said. Basil came quickly into the room behind the servant. I am very pleased to see you, said Basil. I have been very worried about you. I came here last night after I read the news about Sybil. Your servant said that you had gone to the opera, but I knew it couldn't be true. Dorian continued eating his breakfast. I thought you had gone to visit Sybil's family, Basil went on. I didn't know where you were. My dear Basil, said Dorian, I was at the opera, of course. Dorian sounded very bored. I had a nice evening. Now don't talk about boring subjects and don't talk about the past. That is a terrible thing to say, said Basil. The girl you love is dead and you tell me you had a nice evening? Yesterday is not the past. Yesterday is a few hours ago. Stupid, boring people cannot forget the past quickly, answered Dorian angrily. But I have forgotten it already. The boy whose picture I painted was gentle and kind, said Basil sadly. You have changed, Dorian. It is Harry's fault. Oh, Basil, said Dorian, you have come too late. Yesterday, when Harry told me Sybil had killed herself, Perhaps Sybil didn't mean to kill herself, said Basil. Perhaps it was an accident. She wanted to kill herself, answered Dorian. It wasn't a boring, ordinary accident. Sybil's death was exciting and wonderful. She died of love for me. Oh, no, said Basil quietly. Dorian went on speaking. I was sad, Basil. I was sad yesterday at about half past five. Now I'm not sad, so you don't need to worry about me. Be pleased that I'm not sad. Basil sighed. He decided to say nothing else about Sybil. I would like to paint another portrait of you, said Basil. No, shouted Dorian. No, that's impossible. You can't. Basil was very surprised. But Dorian, why not? he asked. Then he saw that a cloth was covering his portrait of Dorian. And why have you covered the picture? It's the best portrait I've ever painted. Basil walked across the room towards the painting. No, shouted Dorian. You mustn't look at it. But Dorian, I want to show the picture in a gallery in Paris, replied Basil. I want to see it. You can't, said Dorian. I will never speak to you again if you look at it. And... Dorian thought quickly. You have changed your mind. Harry said that you didn't want to show the picture in a gallery. Why didn't you want to show it? Harry said there was a strange reason. You will laugh at me if I tell you, Basil answered. So I won't ask to see the picture again. 
Dorian laughed now. <laughs> no, Basil, I want to know. Why didn't you want to show the picture? Basil sighed. He started to explain. He told Dorian what he had told Harry. When I met you, I knew you were important. You became my dearest friend. I became a better artist because of you. But an artist shows his feelings in his pictures. I did not want people to know my feelings, so I did not want to show the painting in a gallery. Now I am not so worried. I don't mind if people see the picture. So, now I have told you, said Basil. But you will not let me see the picture. You will not let me paint you again. And you will not give me a reason. You make me very sad. Dorian smiled. Basil was not going to find out the secret of the picture. We are still friends, Dorian said. And I will come and have tea with you soon. That will be nice. As soon as Basil left, Dorian walked across the library to the portrait. Carefully, he folded the cloth very tightly around the painting. Nobody, he thought to himself, will ever see this again. Dorian rang a bell to call a servant. Get someone to help you, he said. Carry this picture upstairs to the top of the house. Put it in the small room in the attic. Dorian watched while two servants carried the painting up to the attic room. Then he locked the door and put the key in his pocket. It was the only key to that room. It was five o'clock when Dorian went back to the library. He found that Harry had sent him a copy of the evening newspaper. There was a report in the newspaper about the inquest on Sybil's death. The report said that Sybil had drunk poison by accident and killed herself. The report did not say anything about Dorian. Dorian threw away the newspaper. Later, Dorian met Harry at a hotel to have dinner. They sat at a small round table. I'm hungry, said Dorian. Harry smiled. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. It was a night in November and it was the night before Dorian's 38th birthday. Seventeen years had passed since Dorian had locked the portrait in the attic room. Late in the evening, Dorian was walking home through the streets of London. He'd been to a dinner party at a friend's house. Dorian was alone, and he was thinking about his life. He was thinking about the last seventeen years. For many years, people had heard strange and terrible things about Dorian Gray, but they did not believe these things. When he was twenty, Dorian had been a beautiful young man. Now he was thirty-eight, and he was still a beautiful young man. People thought he must be good and kind. People were wrong. The strange and terrible things were true. Dorian was unkind and cruel. Dorian spent time in strange places, and he knew evil men. But only Dorian knew the secret of the picture. He often went up to the attic room. He unlocked the room and stood in front of the picture for hours. The face of the man in the picture was ugly and wrinkled. The face was getting older and older, and it was very, very evil. The picture showed the evil inside Dorian Gray. It showed the evil in his soul. Often Dorian looked at the picture, then looked in a mirror. He laughed when he saw his face in the mirror. It was young and beautiful. Dorian's wish had come true. Dorian was thinking. He had been happy for many years. He had enjoyed his life. He had not cared about other people. Dorian had done the things Harry had told him to do. Dorian was a rich man. He bought a house in the country. He bought valuable pictures and fine books, and he bought beautiful furniture. He wore beautiful clothes and expensive jewellery. He always wore many rings on his fingers. But now Dorian was worried. He was worried because he was not happy any longer. Some people would not speak to him now. Some people would leave a room when he entered it. Some people told stories about the strange life of Dorian Gray. 
and Dorian was worried that somebody would find out the truth. He was worried that somebody would see the portrait. Then everybody would find out that the stories were true. They would find out that he was an evil man. Dorian was hurrying home to see his portrait now. Often he left dinner parties early and hurried home to see his portrait. Sometimes he went on holiday, then hurried home to see his portrait. It was eleven o'clock, and it was a foggy night. Dorian saw very few people as he walked home. He had nearly reached his house when a man walked past him. The man was walking very fast and carrying a suitcase. Dorian recognised the man. It was Basil Hallward. Dorian did not want to talk to Basil, so he walked more quickly. But suddenly he heard Basil's voice. Dorian, Dorian, I'm pleased to see you. Dorian had to stop and turn round. I've been to your house, continued Basil. I wanted to see you before I went to Paris. I am leaving on the midnight train, and I wanted to talk to you before I went. I am going to the station now. You walked straight past me. Didn't you recognise me? It is impossible to recognise anyone in this thick fog, replied Dorian. It's difficult to recognise my own house. It's nice to see you, Basil, he went on. But、um, aren't you going to miss your train? Oh, no, I can get to the station in twenty minutes, and I do want to talk to you, Basil replied. I'm going to live in Paris for six months. I want to talk to you before I go. Dorian was not pleased to see Basil, but he invited him into the house. They went to the library. Dorian lay back in a large armchair. I hope you don't want to be serious, he said. I don't like serious things, Basil. I'm sorry, Dorian, replied Basil quietly, but it is serious. What do you want to say? cried Dorian. I hope you don't want to talk about me. I'm tired of myself tonight. I want to be somebody else. But Basil did want to talk about Dorian. People are saying terrible things about you, Dorian, he said. I don't care, replied Dorian quickly. It's interesting to hear terrible things about other people, but it's boring to hear terrible things about myself. These terrible things must interest you, replied Basil. You must care what other people say about you. I don't believe anything that I hear about you, he continued. I look at your beautiful face, and I know you are not an evil man. A man's face shows the evil that is inside him. I am an artist, and I know this. Dorian's face became very pale. He sat silently and stared at Basil. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Outside it was very dark and very foggy. In the library it was very quiet. The room was lit by a small lamp on a table. Basil sat down and continued talking. Why don't people want to be your friends any more, Dorian? He asked. The Duke of Berwick will not stay in the same room as you. Because of you, Sir Henry Ashton has left England forever. And there are worse things, he went on. A young soldier has killed himself. Adrian Singleton has disappeared. Lord Kent is very upset about his son. Nobody will talk to the Duke of Perth. Oh, Dorian, these people were your friends. What have you done to them? Stop it, Basil! shouted Dorian. I haven't done anything. It's not my fault if young men do stupid things. I want to believe you," said Basil sadly. "But you have influenced your friends. You have made people do terrible things. What did you do to Harry's sister? Now no one will speak to her. Are you an evil man, Dorian? Take care, Basil," said Dorian. "Do not say any more." But Basil continued speaking. "I told people that you were a good man. I said I knew you well." But do I know you well? I cannot see your soul. I do not know if there is good or evil inside you. No," said Dorian slowly. "You cannot see my soul." His body was shaking, and his face was very pale. <laughs>